Hi, this is Anne from Get More Life. I'm really excited to be here with you today. And I have Teresa Jensen, who is a wonderful, experienced athlete. She has done, count them, over 70 half marathon races. So you have done a ton of races in your, in your, in your <laughs> career. And that's one reason why we wanted to talk to you so much is because you are so experienced. There are probably a lot of people out there that are scared to do their first race. Mm -hmm and they would love to hear your advice. So what is it about a half marathon that you enjoy so much? You've done so many. I think the biggest thing that I enjoy is the challenge. I like to take on hard things and I like the sense of accomplishment after finishing them and finishing many of them. The more the better to me, I'm just gonna keep going and, and I really enjoy that. And then also just race day energy and just you always get to run in a new place, and you get usually we take friends and we go on a trip to do it. So, so it's a really it's good time. Very, yeah, very fun. Do you, is the whole race fun, or is there a period between like nine and thirteen that gets depends on the rough? day. <laughs> depends on the day for sure. Sometimes those last few miles are a little, maybe not the funnest ones. They're usually harder than the first few miles. Yes, <laughs> good point. Good point. So, when did you do your first half marathon? My first one ever was um, in Moab. It's uh -huh. called the other half because uh -huh. there's there's a, a half in March. This one's in April, uh, October, in October, and it was October 2004. So you've done all those races since 2004. Ten and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is a, so. How many races is that a year? So I've done as little as five a year and as many as twelve. So just depends on the year. I've had a few injuries in there, so. Mm -hmm. So you just around. consistently keep going and keep doing races and... Yeah, pretty consistent. So you must really enjoy it. I do. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I enjoy running too, but I don't get out to nearly that many races. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> do you find that you stay on a regular, consistent training schedule all the time? Yeah, I find that it's the best way for me to do it just because um, it's a lot easier to just be kind of ready or mostly ready all the time then to have to start over and, and build up the miles again. It's just a harder process to do that. So that's, and that's kind of why I do so many races. It's just because to just it's easier to just stay ready yeah. all the time. Yeah. So that gives me motivation to just stay there. And what kind of length do you do? Do you have a specific kind of a schedule per week that you do? Um, it varies. It depends on if I'm cycling a lot too and, and that kind of thing. But I always usually do a long run and I'll usually start training around seven or eight miles and I'll just add a mile every week until mm -hmm. I get to 10 or 11 or so and then do a half. But and that's long enough for yeah. usually so. I, I keep saying I'm going to go farther than 13 to train for half but I never do. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done at least one, how many full marathons? Two full. So you did it once and then you had to do it again. And then I had to do it again and now I have this thing where I've done two and two countries now so now I feel like I have to do a different country for a third one so I haven't, still, I haven't worked that out yet. You're still thinking it over? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I did one. That was my bucket list. I might never need to do another full. We'll see. They're challenging. Yes. They're like we'll a part-time job training for those. Yeah. It's hard. And I think that training, you know, with as many miles as the races would have been helpful. Because they tell you yeah. for a marathon for a beginner to get up to 20 and then right. kind of cruise those last few miles. And, yeah. So what are your fitness goals for moving forward from here? Um, I just, one of them I always want to just be able to do things, so one of my top goals is just to stay uninjured, which means just stay in shape and train And to just be healthy so that you can yes. go out and have fun. Yes. That's a great goal. I think that's yeah. everyone's goal. Yeah. So good answer. <laughs> So, with all these races that you've done, I asked you to write down some of your best tips for the race day. Yeah. So, tell us what are some of the things you definitely should do or should not do for a race day? Um, well, number one for me is to, to train or be ready, at least somewhat ready. Um, That's I just, good. I just find you have a better day, you have a better recovery if you're just ready for it. So, I like to put it on my calendar and then backtrack out and and mm -hmm. kind of deduct miles till I get to where I am and just try to make sure that's on my schedule so I, I get it done. And make sure you have enough time allowed. Because mm -hmm. things be always prepared. come up. If you don't have it on your schedule, you'll always fill it up with something else. So Because you don't say, I'm going to do a marathon tomorrow. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm ready. Right. <laughs> I go 
So about a month, month and six weeks, yeah. Okay, that's really good. Yeah. So, so what else? Other um, race day tips? Another tip, and one I learned the very hard way, is um, calories and fueling your body in the right way before and after a race. Uh-huh. Um, I did 20, you'll, you'll laugh, I did 27 half marathons before I ever had anything other than water on a race. Wow. And now I take three goos every race. And I remember the first time I had a goo, it was just like the most amazing. <laughs> I have energy. I can get through this way easier. So, so you find that those make a big difference? Yeah. Yeah. Those make a big difference and making sure you eat before, but also eating after or getting some protein after or chocolate milk, yogurt or something. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times you're, you're at the, at the finish line and you're busy and you're traveling and you're doing stuff. And a lot of times you just think, I'll just eat when I get home. But then it's two hours goes by and then that really hurts your recovery. So, so to I eat try soon it. after you're done. Yeah. Right and usually you're really hungry anyway, so that usually helps. Usually you are. Usually. <laughs> if your day has gone well, if you're yes, not hungry, chances hungry. are you're having some kind of other problem. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So that's good. So eating before and after. And yeah. I don't usually use a lot of goo in my training, but I have used yeah. it some in uh, on race day. And now, so does that lead you into one of your other tips? Because I know that's a no-no. It's one of those things you're never supposed to do is do something different on race day right. than and, you do in your training. And that's true. I do it in training as well. The, uh-huh. same, the nope. same thing. Every four miles, I have mm-hmm. a goo. You want to make sure you have your system and you know it works for you. And and never, well, one time I did wear shoes for the first time. You always kind of want to oh, not, not did, do that. Did that go them. badly? or It went okay, but I, I forgot my shoes at home, so I had to buy them on the way. Oh. And so it's, it's just what you got to do Never forget but your shoes if you're traveling for your a shoes. race. That's a great tip. <laughs> Number great one. Tip. <laughs> Shoes and sports bra. <laughs> yes, because you want your most comfortable yes. everything, yes. right? Right. Right. That was advice that I got is to never yes. wear anything brand new. Right. Nothing that bugs you. Nothing, mm-hmm. Yeah. The most comfortable. Right. Okay. So I think a lot of people get really nervous before races. After doing so many, do you find you still get nervous before a race? Not really. Well, if I do, I tell myself done a lot of these. You've it's done 70 races. Okay. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so most of the time it's it's probably more excitement than, well, that's than nervousness. But that's but yeah, good. if I do get nervous, I just tell myself, it's, it's okay, you've done this a lot. <laughs> do you have any advice for somebody that's new to this that might be really scared before a race? Um, just, just if you're trained, that's probably going to be your best um, self-esteem builder to know you can get through it if you've gotten through most of it already. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that seems to help the most. Um, so good preparation. Yeah. Also, just enjoy yourself. Look at. I mean, usually you're in a different environment. You're you're not where you you're usually run, mm-hmm. and so you can just find things to enjoy or find people that are interesting or, or mm-hmm. just plug in your music, and that helps too sometimes. Okay, that's yeah. great. So, have you ever had anybody give you a tip that went really badly for you later? Um. Well, some tips that you just hear, like, because I, I read runner, Runner's World a lot, and uh-huh. just tips that you hear that you're supposed to do or whatever. Um, one of them um, is tapering. Um, they, they say you should not run the week before your race. Right. And, and I'll do my long run a week out, but then I'll still run two or three times during the week just to keep everything going. I find that you kind of get cement legs if you wait a whole week. And well, that especially race. when you're so used to running. I don't think yeah. you really need to do that. Yeah, and um, I think for a marathon they tell you to do your long, tr- longest training run like three, three weeks, weeks out, mm-hmm. and I think I did mine two weeks out, which seemed plenty long oh, for good. me. Yeah. So I did taper some. Yeah, but same thing. You don't want to just stop. You don't want to just I stop agree. for the week. And, and the other thing that um, the big carb loading myth, like. With people out there eating crazy it stuff. Took I'm carb loading. <laughs> and I used to think that that was really important. And and then um, I met my husband, who's a really really good athlete, and he informed me that your muscles carry up to 2,000 calories at all times. So you're never gonna. I mean, if you only burn 1,300 on a half marathon, you mm-hmm. already have 2,000 stored. You don't need to load up. So right, and it might <laughs> have the opposite effect if you go crazy exactly. eating. You might exactly. have problems. Exactly. Also, you learn the funny things you can't eat the night before. So what? And kinds you should of learn things? that while you're training. Oh yes. What kinds of things? Um, 
for me, I learned I cannot eat gorgonzola cream sauce. <laughs> it's very bad. Very okay. bad. Okay. Noted. <laughs> I eat that every day for breakfast, so I should be good. I went out to eat the night before, and I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Not good. Okay. Um, another thing I found for me, I mean, I, everybody's bodies are different, but I can't have too much salad. I can have a little tiny salad, but I can't load up mm. on the salad. Too much salad. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of have to stick to a lean protein to be carbs would be good. <laughs> I just try to eat something really normal, something yeah. that I eat all the time. Right. And that's true. Because again, sometimes uh, those of us that don't do that many races, we're like, it's the night before a race. I'm freaking out a little. <laughs> and I think a lot of people do that. It's just a lot of pressure and right. totally. pressure for everything to go well. I mean, if you have a really bad training run, you just go home and try right. again. Right. But there's a lot more pressure on race day. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. So, tell us about your best race ever. My best race ever, I have to say, was number 50. Uh huh. And that's because I had 23 wonderful friends come and run with me, and I had 70 people come down to Vegas, and I got married at mile three. So, I remember that race. Yes. <laughs> it was so much fun. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, that was the best great. one ever. It was, it was the best. Really good. It was really fun. Um, me and my husband ran together. We usually don't because he's much faster than right, me. Right, right. You have to, you know, that was yes. in the marriage contract that yes. he could not beat you in That's the race. Right. That's so great. He had to carry me over the finish line, just like the threshold thing, you know. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. But just having so many people there supporting, so many families and family members and friends um, was just awesome. Just so and how fun. do you find 23 people that are the same pace as you? I well, they so. just stayed with us for three miles, and then we all did our own thing after that. <laughs> Okay, I can find people to pace me for three miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. And it landed on number 50 with... 50 for me, 25 for him. Wow. Kind of funny, yeah. <laughs> Weird, do the math. I know. <laughs> so what, what was your worst race ever? Oh my gosh, so my worst race ever was my last race, which was actually number 71. Oh um, no. But it was the Ogden Marathon, and it was just really bad. That was the time. one just several weeks ago when the weather was really rotten. Yeah, the weather was horrible. It was freezing, pouring rain. Um, I had a stomach bug, so I hadn't eaten much for a week. Oh. And I had two funerals, right, one before, one after that race. And so it was just emotionally, wow. physically, it was not good. I actually had the thought to just quit running, like, ever <laughs> during that <laughs> like race. Like, permanently? And I didn't run, I didn't run for the most I've ever not ran after a race. I didn't run, run for like two or three weeks after. Wow. Yeah. And that was, was a long time for you. It was hard. Well, I'm glad you didn't yeah. quit entirely. Yeah, yeah. I'm also glad I didn't enter that race. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Yes, I'm glad you didn't too. I did the Ogden Marathon on the, the year that it was perfectly clear and sunny and the other so years lucky. around it have been completely pouring rain, snow at the beginning. Just horrible weather. So it has been. I guess the race just needs me in it in order to Will you to please have come back? Okay, I'll try. I'll work for next year. Yay. <laughs> so, do you have any advice for people that are just getting started running? Yeah, so so running's not fun when you first start. <laughs> at oh all. no, is that in the fine print? <laughs> like it's not fun to practice You're not going to go out for your lot. first run and like have a wonderful day. It's going to kind of suck. And I hear that from a lot of people. Yeah, I tried running. It wasn't for me. And, and I just ask them, how long did you try it for? Because... Honestly, if you don't consistently go two, three times a week for three or four or five weeks, it's not going to get to the good part. It's not going to get fun. You're not going to find your your sweet spot. You're going to have aches and pains and complaining parts, and you just have to not listen to it and keep going and be so consistent. Just persevere until you get to the point where you're like, this is really fun. Yeah, right, exactly. And, and that's what's so sad is most people don't get through that. And I think maybe if they start gradually and pace themselves, if you're really not ready to run yet, then yeah, walk first. Start slow, yeah. Yes. Walk, um, run. We tried to encourage everybody to do that, to be sensible yeah. when they're starting out, to check with their doctor, get checked out, make sure they're okay, mm -hmm. and Straight, then yeah. to start with walking, and then walk at whatever pace is going to raise your heart rate, and yeah. then walk faster, and then walk with an incline, mm -hmm. and then walk fast with an incline, and just build up to it gradually. So. I would encourage people, for sure, if you're going to start running, to don't think that you can run out there and no. do a six-minute mile. Right. And, 
you might die. You're gonna or wish you had. Like you're dying, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I would definitely encourage people to take it really gr- gradually and then, and also and to run and walk. Do you find a lot of people do that really successfully? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know a runner, he's probably 65 years old, and, and he does 10 marathon, 10 poles a year. Wow. And he does the method where you run for four minutes, walk for one for the whole entire race. And he loves it. He does great. He beats me every time. So I keep getting passed by people that do that. I yeah. just, I have my pace when I'm in my pace. I just, yeah. it's, I'm not very fast. I think everybody knows that already. Yeah. But, but I keep getting passed by people that run a little walk, a little run, a little They're walk. They're called your little. leapfrog buddy. Yes. <laughs> you just wave at them every time that you they go them, by. You pass them, then they pass you, then you pass them, pass <laughs> you. It's great. So, so that's really fun in races. Sometimes you see people lots of times. Yeah. Although there are a lot of people I never see again. No, <laughs> I know. Until the end. The speakers that are on loud for everyone to hear. <laughs> so any other advice for people just getting started? Um, I would say find, find your reason to run instead of maybe taking on anyone else's reason or doing it for someone else. Um, there's lots of really good reasons, whether it's you're a really fast runner it's fun to see your progress and you like to maybe like Eric he does all the data and tries to beat his time all the time and does the Mm -hmm. Strava website and all that Um, or maybe you just want to get some me time and go out for a half hour you know by yourself that's what I love it feels like a meditation to me a a time to clear your mind and Mm -hmm. so let's talk for a minute about that what's the difference between going outside and just running on a treadmill because some poor souls are running on treadmills do you do you like to run on a treadmill? I I don't mind it if it's seventy degrees in my basement and ninety five outside. You know that kind of a okay. thing. Okay. Or it's I raining. I wouldn't want to run or... in ninety five. I'd much rather run in the cold than in the heat. Yeah. But in the summer, I just run first thing in the morning, and yeah. it's always it's good. Good time of day. Yes. Yeah. But I find that it's much better for your mind, soul, and spirit it to be is. outside. It may not be perfect for your workout regimen, but it is. <laughs> But you can also, I mean, if you put on a movie or, I mean, I've woken up to go do a half marathon one morning and it was sleeting outside and I was like, nope, plugged in a movie. I did, I actually did 13 miles on the treadmill. So that's the craziest I've ever gotten on it. But, um, okay. but sometimes it's a good replacement. It's better than not doing anything. It's much better than not so, doing anything. Yeah. I'm just a fan of getting outside. Yes. And I am... I'm sorry, folks, somewhat famous for working out in rotten weather. Uh. (laughs) If you're going to do anything in horrible weather, run, because you're always comfortable. There you go. You're always warm, even if it's rotten weather. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. It has been so fun to go over these things, and I think your advice will be really helpful for all of those who are just getting started and people who are somewhere along the way to 71 (laughs) half marathons. I've done, I think, official ones. That's awesome. <laughs> and job. one full. Good job. And then we do the Bear Gutsman every That's a lot more than a lot of people. 